Hey kids, it's Charlie Abuso again, your chemistry teacher. Hey, it's the, uh, it's the first Zoom of 2021. We're in uh, the beginning of the end of this pandemic and we're beginning phases chemistry. Phases are gases, liquids, and solids. Uh, aqueous also, aqueous is kind of a mixture. It's not quite a phase, but it sort of falls into this. I wanna show you just a fun Zoom. Um, I have a, a book from a long, long time ago, uh, from 1960, the year I was born, 101 Science Experiments for Kids. And it's supposed to inspire kids to think. And since I got the book and you're kids, I figured this might be really cool. So some of these, most of these experiments are from the book. Some of them I've, I've always done, um, but I've decided to put together a, a Zoom with no notes just to see what is a gas? Oh, is the bells. What is a gas? What is liquid? And, uh, you know, and just see some cool stuff. So this first little experiment I'm going to show you, my daughter, who's in med school right now, she's a freshman in med school. When she was in third or fourth grade, she came home from school and she said, Dad, you see this cup? I can prove to you that air is real, that gases are real. I'm like, really? I'm a chemistry teacher, how cool is that? Let me sock it to me. My daughter is 23 years old. When she was like nine or 10, she gave me this cup. This cup and this, this paper towel, that's a UE paper towel. This cup has been with me ever since. I keep it hanging in my classroom. It's symbolic of thinking. And also it's a really cool experiment. So. I have right here just an empty cup. There's a little tiny piece of scotch tape at the bottom to hold that paper towel in there. The paper towel is dry and it won't come out because it's a little bit of scotch tape, but it's the same scotch tape and the same paper towel from like 11, 12 years ago. And in this is air, right? And air, some people will say, oh, air is nothing. Look, look how fast I can run in the air compared to, look how fast if I'm in the water up to my hips in the low end of the pool, how slow I run. The water is there and it's blocking me. But the air is, it's nothing. No, air is not nothing. Air is something. Gases are real. And I'm going to show to you right now, I'm going to prove to you, I hope, over and over and over, that gases are real. And they actually follow some rules that we can measure, and, and it's pretty cool. So I've got to change the view. Right here, I have a very large beaker of water. It's just tap water. It doesn't matter. You can do this at home. And I'm going to take this cup, I'm going to turn it upside down, and I'm going to push the whole cup underwater. The whole cup is going to, my fingertips are going to get wet. But the paper towel is going to stay dry. Let's watch this. Ready? So I'm going to push this down, and my fingers are now underwater. But the paper towel is not going to get wet. You know why the paper towel is not going to get wet? Because the air in the cup, it gets a little squished under the water but the air in the cup is in the way and the water can't get up to touch the paper towel. And when they take this out, give it a little shake because it's wet on the outside, the paper towel is totally dry inside. This works every single time. You know why? Because gases are real, science is cool, and with some simple little things like a cup and a paper towel and a beaker of water, I can prove to you and you can realize, wow, gases, they really are real. Okay, let's see this next little experiment that I got set up. This next one's a little harder to see, so I have a little bit of a, a picture and then we can see it. I have here a very big flask. You wanna see that? It's right here. Let me turn this so you can see it. You see that big flask? And in that flask, I have some colored water. I put some food dye in it so we could hopefully see it a little better. So let me tell you, in the flask we have water. There's a cork here at the top, see it? It's black and rubber. And there's a long skinny glass tube that goes all the way down and into the water. Now because water sticks to itself, and it also will adhere to the glass tube, it goes up a little. So if we get a really Good look. I'm hoping you can see this. This is a really hard one to see. The water is a little higher in the tube. Let me see if I can adjust this so you can see this maybe a little better. You see how the, 
the glass has just a little bit of water in it. Now, I know this is hard to see, but you're gonna really be amazed. The air inside this container is corked at the top, so the amount of air in here is sealed. The volume is set. Now the air in here is room temperature. It's been here since last night. But if I were to put my hands on here and heat up the air, the heat from my hands is transferring into the glass. And when it goes into the glass, it's gonna heat up the air and the air is gonna get hotter. The air molecules are gonna to start to move faster and they're gonna hit harder. Now, when they bump into the glass, it doesn't make much difference, but when they bounce into the surface of the water, it's actually gonna push the water down a little bit harder. And what happens is, and this is very hard to see, but it is working. By doing this, I don't know if you can see it at all, the water has gone up the tube a little bit. Now, this is not very dramatic, but the reason that the water goes up the tube is because the heat is transferred into the gas molecules. The gas molecules move faster, and since there's no escape for them, they push down on the water harder, and that pushes more water up the tube. I have to admit that that was not a very spectacular demo, but it does work. It worked for me. Now, here I have a balloon on an empty Erlenmeyer flask. And the flask has air in it. Now there's even a little bit of air in the balloon, but it's, it's very, very little. See, I got a little cut on my hand. I smashed myself taking out the recycles today. So the air in here is room temperature, but if I put it on this hot plate, the hot plate, it's been on for a while, it's on five. The hot plate is gonna transfer heat into the Erlenmeyer flask. The air in the Erlenmeyer flask is gonna to start to move faster and faster. The particles are affected by the heat. The hotter the particles, the more movement they have. The more movement they have, they're gonna expand. The gas is gonna to try to get bigger. Now the glass can't enlarge, but we'll see what happens up top. As the, as the flask gets hotter and hotter, and the air gets hotter and hotter, there's nowhere to go in the glass. It should make the balloon get a little bit bigger. Now this may take a couple of minutes. You know what, maybe we're gonna come back to this one. We're gonna let this sit for a while and we'll come back and check this out in a few minutes. We'll move on to the next one. Now in this, I wanna take the mass of a balloon that's empty. Now, I'm then gonna blow it up and see if air has any mass whatsoever. Now, this is gonna be a little tricky because once the balloon, here's a balloon, I tried to do this. Once the balloon fills up, it won't stay on. So it's a little out of control. So what I decided to do was, I have a little piece of glass with some masking tape that I'm gonna weigh with the balloon. And then once the balloon is blown up, I'm gonna stick it to the masking tape so I can see if there's a change in mass. So right now, the mass is 32.05 grams. 32.05 grams. Now that's the mass of the balloon and the glass. So now I'm gonna take the balloon, I'm gonna blow it up. And I'm gonna tie it off. And then when I stick it to this piece of tape, it's gonna easily allow it to get massed together. And the mass is gonna go up to 32 point, oh, it's moving around a little, 75 grams. So the mass has actually gone up by 0 0.70 grams, 0 0.70 grams. So the air in the balloon has mass of 0 0.70 grams. That's not a lot. Air is, is a gas and gases are not very dense and this is not a very big balloon, but air has mass. This next demo I do every year for you. I have an empty seltzer can 
and I have just a little bit of water here, tap water, and you can do this at home. I'm gonna put this in and get the water in there. I put about 40 mLs in there, and I'm gonna put it on here, and I'm gonna heat it up. Now, the, the hot plate, let me kneel down so you can see me. The hot plate was on, but now I cranked it up to 10, and we're gonna give it a moment to get the water inside to boil. And I have a glove here so I can pick up the boiling water in just a second. Now what's gonna happen is the can, which has some water in it now, the heat's gonna transfer through the hot plate into the can, the can into the water. The water is gonna boil. Now when water boils, it goes from the liquid phase to the gas phase, that's a phase change, at the boiling point. The can is gonna fill up with steam. Now steam is hot, right? Coming out at, at 373 Kelvin, 100 degrees centigrade. It's hot and the steam's gonna keep getting pushed from the bottom because more steam's coming out and it's open can, so it's, the pressure won't build up. The, the can is just gonna fill up with steam. The air is gonna get pushed out. The air is room temperature and as it gets hot, it's gonna go up and the steam is gonna push it up. The can's gonna be filled with hot steam. Now once it's boiling for a moment or two, and I'm sure the can is filled with steam, I'm gonna pick the can up with the glove and I'm gonna put it into this big beaker of room temperature water. What's gonna happen all at once is the steam is gonna lose its energy to the cold water and the steam is gonna condense into a liquid. Now the gas is gonna fill up the whole volume of the can. But when it turns to liquid, it's gonna have a much smaller volume because the molecules are not gonna be far apart moving so fast. They're gonna actually collapse and stick together. So inside the can, the pressure is gonna drop dramatically. Now there's air pressure, which you don't know about. I'm gonna show you some air pressure stuff in a little while. The air pressure, all the molecules banging around, pressing on everything, pressing on the table, pressing on the can, pressing on my eyes and my head. The pressure is so high above me, that's why I'm not taller. The pressure is on everything, but it's, it's constant. It's like fish don't know they're wet. We don't really appreciate that we're in air pressure until it's gone, right? If you were ever in a place where there was no air pressure, right? All of a sudden you wouldn't be able to breathe. That would be a big wake up. Oh, oh this is a bad thing. Or if you go deep in a pool, sometimes your ears pop. You can feel it the crushing, crushing feeling because the water is a lot heavier and denser than air and it literally squishes you more. But the air pressure is hardly noticeable. But what's gonna happen is the air pressure that's pushing on the outside of this can and on the inside. Now, right now it's air pressure inside. Soon it's gonna be steam pressure on the inside, but it's gonna be the same oomph, the same number, the same value to keep the can whole. But what's gonna happen is the, uh, the pressure inside is gonna go almost to zero. And what's gonna happen? The pressure outside's constant, the pressure inside's gonna stay close to zero. Let me see what's going on here. You know what? That's getting hot. Let's move on to the next one and we'll come back to this too. Oh, I got two in a row to show you. So let's see what we got here. In this little demo, let's see if I get this in a good view. I have two candles. Right? They're both exactly the same candle. They're both going to make the same kind of fire. And I'm going to light them both up right now. Now, this is a combustion reaction. Let me see if I can get in the picture. Hello. I'm like, I'm like elf on a shelf. I'm like, here I am. You know, I just saw a really funny um, video that came out. Let me turn this a little so I can be in this. <laughs> Fauci on a couchy. This is like... Elf on a shelf, this is Charlie on a lab table. I have two candles and the candles are undergoing what's called combustion. Combustion is when the hydrocarbon wax burns in oxygen and the products of carbon dioxide and water. Now, I have two beakers. I'm gonna turn those beakers at the same time on top of these two candles. One's a big beaker with more air and one's a little beaker with less air. And that means less or more oxygen. So which one you think is going to burn longer, the one with more oxygen or the one with less oxygen? All right, let's see what we got. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. So here we are. We got both of these burning. Oh, the little one went out already. 
and the big one is still lit. It's still lit. It's going out, but it's still lit. The one with the little amount of oxygen went out first. The oxygen is a gas. The oxygen gets used up. It's invisible, but, but something's really happening. And, and that's really obvious what's happening. All right, let's see what's going on in these other experiments. We'll bring you back. Remember, we had the balloon on the hot plate. Look at that balloon now. Let me turn this right off. Look at that balloon. Remember it was all dead over? Why is it so big now? I mean, it's not a big balloon. It's not, it's not like, it's not like a big balloon, right? It's a little balloon, but it's, it's, it used to be droopy. How come it's not droopy anymore? Because the heat in the Erlenmeyer flask makes the molecules of air move faster and faster and faster and they bang harder. Now, when it hits the glass, it doesn't make much difference at all. But the molecules need to expand and they have nowhere to go and say, except for inside this rubber balloon. How cool is that? Now, we're almost ready to see this. I can hear, I can hear this boiling. I'm going to move this out of the way so you get a much better picture of what's going to happen here. You see the steam coming out of the can? Can you see it? So I'm going to turn this over quick. Holy smokes. Look what happened to this can in almost like no time. Look at this can. The can is, is what? Did the can get, this is, I have to sit down for this because this is a kind of a funny joke, but it's not a joke. It's, it's chemistry. Here's the can. See this can? You can do this at home. You can put a can with a little bit of water on the stove. If it's electric stove, it's easy. If it's a gas stove, don't turn the, the fire on too hot and just get a pot of cold water and get a, a hot glove, right? So you can pick it up and a pot of cold water. You just turn it over. You can do this at home. It's pretty safe. It's, it makes a little splash, but the water's cold. Seems scarier than it is, but chemistry is like that. And I always try to make it a little dramatic too. But anyway, did the can, this is a good question. When the gas inside the can, which was H2O gas, when it co got cold and it turned to H2O liquid and the volume dropped, did the can suck in because of low pressure inside or did the air pressure squash it from the outside? So here's the question again. Did the can suck in or did the can get crushed from the outside? Tell me, what do you think? Here's the answer. Chemistry never sucks. The can was crushed. The inside pressure dropped, the outside pressure kept going, and the outside pressure that's even on your eyeballs that you never notice is strong enough to do this to a can. All right, amazing. When the pressure inside drops, the outside air pressure, the molecules you don't even feel smashing on the can from every direction went squash that can. Chemistry never sucks. All right, couple more. Here we go. See this glass? It's filled with water. I brought this, I brought this glass home. I can move this. I don't know why I keep forgetting that. Like I'm the director. I can do anything I want. I brought this glass from my house. I drink water out of this glass at home. Right next to me, I have plain index card. It's green. And it's big because I didn't know which glass I was going to bring. I really, oh, I got two of them. I got three of them. I only need one. The glass is filled right to the top. Right? Now, the air pressure, which is everywhere, the gas particles are moving around. We call it air. It's a gas, right? The oxygen, the nitrogen, the carbon dioxide that comes out of my mouth. There's probably some helium in the room. There's probably some methane. There's H2O gas in here. Um, it's pounding down on the surface, right? Of course, pounding on everything. So let's see what happens when I put the index card on top of this. I'm gonna try to keep you guys in the picture. So I'm gonna put this on top and then I'm just gonna turn this upside down like this. Can you see? I hold it over the sink because I'll talk and I'm gonna lean a little. Now you see this? The water weighs about, I don't know, pound and a half, pushing down. 
but the air pressure, even going up, is pressing so hard on this card. Yeah, I'll shake it a little. The water won't come out. This is not a trick. This is called gas pressure, or in this case, air pressure. The air pressure is pushing up. If this was a, if this was a very thin piece of glass or metal, it would hold indefinitely. What just happened right there is it's index card, right? The index card is made of paper. The paper can get wet. As it gets wet, it moves, it deforms a little. It's, it's not permanent. But if I had a very small piece of glass that would be bigger than the rim of the glass and not too thick, I mean, if the glass was, you know, a half an inch thick, bulletproof glass would be too heavy. But a very thin piece of glass, what happens is the air is moving around in every direction and it's pounding in a sense, molecules are pounding in every direction on everything, including on the top of that glass. So when I turned it upside down, it started pounding on the bottom of that glass and it would hold that piece of paper. Even though the water was trying to push out, the air pressure was holding it up and it would have held it up indefinitely, indefinitely, except for the fact that the paper gets wet. And so in this case, you know, it finally gives up, it, but it's not because of the pressure. It's not because the, the water wins against the pressure. The air pressure is way greater than the gravitational pull on that amount of water. It's the fact that the index card got wet and the wet index card just can't hold itself together. It kind of, it, it, it deforms and creates leaks and oh well. We got one more, one more pretty cool experiment. Now in this one, can you see? I have two empty flasks with rubber corks and two funnels that I, I pushed through. I had to drill it at home. Now, this one, I want you to see them both. Get a good look here. This one, can you see? I don't know where the camera is. This has one little hole in it. One little hole for the funnel. Oh, there it is. I'm gonna put it back in. This one, I had to be a little careful with. And not only did I drill a hole for the funnel, oh, see it? There's another little tiny hole right next to it. It's got two holes in it. One with the funnel and one without the funnel. So the one with the extra hole is here on this side. And this is the one without the extra hole. And they're both identical. And I have in here 40 mLs of water in both of these. And I'm gonna pour 40 mLs of water into these carefully. And we're going to see what happens. This one's already in, and this one, see how it still has water in it? It's slower, it's slower, it's slower. And look, can you see what's coming out of the top? You see those bubbles? Think about this. Think about this. Why did the water go into this flask so fast? And this flask, look, there's still water in there. It's having a hard time getting down. In fact, it's just barely tripping. Oh, there's a little bit more. How come? They both had air in them, but what happens here is when you have two holes, when the water comes down, it's got to push the air out of the way in order to get into the flask at the bottom. With a hole, the air just rushes out, but without another hole, the water pushing down is, the air is pushing up. Look, it's still not down. Look, there's still a lot of water in here. And it's, it's really, really trapped. The water is just pushing down and holding the air and the air is less dense and it's starting to come up. Over time, this is gonna adjust, but this is a, uh, like a fight between the gravity pulling the water down and the pressure of the air going up. And it's, we'll see if we can shake it a little. As little bubbles come up, we're getting very little water down here all of the water easily came down here. And the reason is air is real. Gases are real. They take up space, they have mass, they have volume, and, and they, they're invisible and you can't see them, but that doesn't mean they're not there. That doesn't mean they're not gonna have an impact on, on Earth, on, on the universe. Gases are cool. Gases are, are, um, are real. Gases can change phase into liquids if they get cold enough and 
Liquids can change phase into gas if they get hot enough, and then the solids too, we'll get to that as well. Listen, phase chemistry is pretty cool. Understanding that you can have two phases, or even all three phases at the same exact time. All three phase, phases at the same time. All six phase changes changing at the same time. Now that's not gonna happen in your kitchen. It's not even gonna happen in this classroom. You'd have to have pretty low pressure, and that's hard to produce but it's possible. And, and uh, pretty cold temperature, but not even freezing. Cold enough outside today. Well, today's actually a little bit warmer. This, everything's melting. We're having a phase change outside. And that's potentially going to be some flooding issues, right? Today's the last day of school um, in December. Uh, it was about 4.5 degrees centigrade because my car runs in centigrade because I like to drive people crazy. But anything over zero means the ice is going to melt and the snow is going to melt. And we're worried that there's going to be flooding because as the snow melts and the sewers are all clogged up with snow and ice on top, the water's got nowhere to go. This could be a problem. And then if it gets cold tonight, all that liquid water is going to refreeze into sheets of ice. So phase changes are really important in your life. And uh, we're going to learn all about them. Listen, last year, 2020, worst year ever, period. I mean, I don't know if there was ever a worse year in the history, maybe during a world war. Honestly, I mean, that's hard to compare. That would be terrible. But we've been living through this pandemic business for a long time. Um, I'm making this in school. I'm not even sure we're coming back to school in January. By the time you're supposed to watch this, I don't know where you'll be. I don't know if we'll be allowed to come back yet, but it is really the beginning of the end of this freaking pandemic. It's time to get your vaccine. Whenever they call your name, just say yes, trust me. I went to my doctor this morning. She said she got her first shot. She can't wait for the second one. And, you know, and she also says there's a lot of people who are getting sick because they're not taking, uh, you know, smart moves. They don't wear their masks or they have too many people over their house or they, they're drinking in bars with people they don't know. And you gotta be careful, right? We're gonna get through this. It's gonna be normal again. Certainly by September, it's gonna be back to normal, old fashioned normal. But until then, we got to be good. Chemistry is cool. I hope you learn it. All right. I'm going to keep trying to teach it. All right. Professionally, I love you. And uh, I'm glad I'm your teacher still. Hang in there, kids. <clears throat> I got to figure out how to turn this off. I always struggle with this part. I like it. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs>